everyone, Kristen Moser here. Today I get to show you my brand new ruler. This is the scallop border template by Creative Grids, designed by me. So what we have here are three different sizes of scallops for different depths of borders, and then um, a corner unit that's universal to all of those. So the nice thing about this, there's no math involved. It will fit any size quilt. It will fit any depth of border, and um, it's pretty clever. I've actually been doing scallop borders this way for like 20 years. Finally, we get to put it in a template form. So what we have is a narrow one. This is just a shallow scallop. So that's good for borders up to about five inches deep. And then we've got a medium size. That's good for borders up to about eight inches deep. And then we have the, the deep one here. That is good for borders up to about 12 inches. So you can get, you know, the wider your border, the deeper your scallop can be. And, um, and then the corner unit is universal to all of those. So it fits any of those. So what I thought I'd show you is how this works. I've got some papers here because I'm actually going to use paper templates. I'm going to use the, the, the template here to draw on um, some paper so I can get my placement. And then you will see how, how this all comes together. So I've got a couple of pieces of paper. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my corner units first. So I'm going to lay these down here right under this um, corner unit centering and then I'm just going to cut all the way around. This will be my corner placement on the quilt. So once I have those, I just have these half moon shapes, I'm going to actually fold them in half again and give myself a little crease. That actually comes in handy when placing them into the corners. So I'm just going to give this one a crease and it'll be all set up. Okay, now the quilt that I'm going to scallop has four inch borders. So I'm going to use the shallow scallop here. So I'm going to grab more of these papers, a couple, three of them, and I'm just going to place them under the shallow scallop. So I'm going to center that here. So cut up and to the top. Just like that. So what this creates is a mirror image. So what I've just done here, my hill and my valley, you do a lot of these. So you would cut quite a few of these depending on how long your quilt is, you're gonna need them to lay down the, the sides and across the top and bottom. So I've actually already got quite a few of those cut. So I'll set these aside and then I'm gonna grab my quilt. Now what I've done is just a panel quilt just like a baby size or something. So, but it's good for showing you how this works. So I've just done this, this panel with a few borders added. So here's the way we do it. We've got the corners here. Now I went and I took it to the ironing board and I pressed a crease into the corners. I folded the quilt in such a way that I could get a 45 line and pressed my nice, uh, my nice crease and that way I line that up with those corner units where I folded them in half. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make some room here. All right, so I'm going to place my corner unit with its crease on the, um, the crease from the iron on the quilt and I'm going to just pin it in place and I'll do the other one on the other side just like that. So you set your corners up first. So I've got two corners set. So I'm going to turn it. So this is the long edge. So I'm going to grab another corner unit and place it down here. And then we have a fourth and final corner. That's going to get a corner unit as well. All right. Okay, starting with the long edge. See if I can get it all up on my table. Okay, so from the corner edges, you are going to take one of your pieces here and put the hill into the corner. So where the corner comes around, it will hit the top of the hill and then come down into the first valley. So that is my markup point. It's just where my hill meets the corner. 
So we'll get those set on both sides and then we can just work in between, laying out the next pieces. So here we have just like this. Okay, so here's the distance I have to cover in between. It's basically from here to here. So I'm just gonna grab more of my hill and valley pieces and turning them valley to valley, hill to hill. You'll see some of my paper pieces have grid, grid on them. That's not necessary, it's just the paper that I had. Okay, I think I can fit one more piece in here. So what I'm gonna do now, this is the beauty of it, there's no math. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoosh all these together by overlapping them little by little. And the nice thing is, is you overlap them even amount. You overlap them at the valley and the hill by even amount. So I'm gonna start with like a quarter inch overlap. And I'm looking to see if that will get me about the, the distance I need. It's gonna be a little bit more than that it looks like. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it with my overlapping. It's just under a half an inch worth of overlap here. Okay, that looks about that looks about right. So by overlapping both the hill and the valley, you keep the balance of the ratio between the two pretty good. So now I'm just going to go in and I'm going to pin these in place. This would be the same if you're using a wider border. Notice when I draw this line and then eventually quilt and cut this out, you're actually not removing much. So a lot of misconceptions when it comes to scallop borders that you're going to be cutting away quite a bit, you really only are shallowing out parts. And of course the depth of that depends on what, um, whether you're using the small, medium, or the large scallop. So even for a small quilt, you could use the large scallop if you wanted a really exaggerated wave look. Okay, so here we have all those balanced in place. That's good. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to take a pen and I'm going to draw this line. Um, the reason I do this is because you would then go and quilt this and you would quilt up to the line and then you would cut it away afterwards. Now you could do this after it's already been quilted. You wouldn't necessarily then draw the line. What you would do is you would just cut. So if you've already quilted it and you wanna go ahead and cut your scallop through the quilting and everything, there's some risk to that because you would wanna bind it right away. So if that's um, more your style, I have done it that way before, but you want to bind it immediately so that none of your quilting stitches pull loose. But it can be done. But for this case, I'm just going to draw the line so then I can quilt up to that line and, um, and cut it away afterwards. Okay, so just about done with this side. I'm just sketching kind of a a rough line to follow so when I go to quilt I don't get my stitches too far over it. And the important thing is you get these corner units. And I'm going to go around the corner just like that. Okay, now the short end. I'm going to turn the whole thing. You don't have to leave these papers in place. As a matter of fact, I think I'll just pull some out so I can use them down the other side. But you do leave the corners in place. So I've got those in place here. And now here I'm going to start with my hill matching my corner again. There we go. Coming down into the valley, on the other side too, the hill matching. Okay, so here's the space that I've got to fill between these two. Now, on the last side, I overlapped them about three eighths of an inch. On this side, I think what I'm gonna to need to do is spread them out. So that's a nice thing you can do, because overlapping them, I think, is not going to work out too well. I would have to overlap a lot in order for it to fit. 
and these, you can overlap them probably about an inch before it starts to really change the dimensions. So seeing as I would have to overlap them maybe closer to an inch and a half or two, I think I'm gonna go the other way and I'm gonna spread them out. So I'll remove some of these. And in this case, it looks like if I spread them out to have about an inch gap between the two in both the valley and the hill, it'll be a nice smooth transition. It'll also be easier to bind. Think about this, you're binding along the curves. So if you've got tighter curves, it'll be a little bit more tedious to bind. So I'm spreading these out, which makes them a little bit longer, a little bit easier to bind. Okay, so I've got, and here again, I'm just eyeballing this, but it's about an inch difference between them. So I'm leaving a gap of an inch at the valley and an inch at the hill. And then I'm gonna take my pin and I'm going to draw around it again. And my corner has been set, so I can just work my way down here, and here's the gap. Go right across and up the other side. And here's the gap again, and then back down. And you can use a fabric marking pin that will disappear, like an air erasable. I'm using a permanent pin so that you guys can see it. I wouldn't necessarily suggest that um, if you're just doing this at home. Okay, so I'm pulling my papers to see, and we've got a nice gentle scallop here. And now I would turn it and go back down the other side. Same thing, this is the long edge again, likely. It will be overlapping again by about three eighths of an inch. Here's the other nice thing. If your quilt's a little wonky and one edge is longer than the other, you'll never know. By doing this method, you will never ever see it. It's gonna disguise all of those imperfections because you can do these minute adjustments and it'll make it totally um, blend in. So it's a pretty great way to uh, make something like that discreet. Okay, so I've already actually got this whole process and the quilting done to one. So I'm gonna show you what I do next. So let me pull that up here. All right, so here is another quilt, a panel that I added borders to. You can see I did this marking line. I quilted up to it. I've left it, you know, raw edge here, and I'm gonna show you how I cut the scallops. You can, of course, use scissors, but you can also use the template, and it's kinda easy to do that. So let me clear some space, and I'll show you how to cut that out using the template. All right, so I've got my corner. Take the plastic, the template plastic, and put it right into the corner. Now here, the ruler has a thick black line going right up through the center of it. So we've got this hanging hole here, and then thick black line. Line that up with the pressed edge, you know, when you did the corner and you pressed a crease in it, this should line up perfectly. So basically coming from the corner, um, inside border, all the way through the, the, the creased line here, headed out towards the outside. So I'm just gonna trim this part right here. Not clear around because remember it matched into one of the hill pieces. And so the, the curve gets a little more gentle. But here this will give me my, my curve. So here we have there, and I think I'm just gonna cut it off like that. Okay, so I've gone my first corner. Now, here's the, the, the shallow one that I've used. So I'm gonna turn this over and match it up so that I've got my line. Right down into the valley, across the valley, turn the ruler over, and now I can go up the other side, the hill, just there, and turn the ruler and line it up. Scoot it towards me a little bit. I'm just going to go like this, and then just scoot it down. I think I had, this is the one I had to spread out a little bit. So going across the valley, and then up the other side, back to the corner. I'll turn the corner unit in. I'm looking for my lineup piece here. Line up that thick black line from the inside border point 
out here. We've got some corner placement guides so you can follow seams if you've got seams to follow. I'm just going to... All right, turning it. And fit it back up in here, down the hill. The valley. And just turn the ruler over. And work your way all the way down the quilt. Hill and valley, hill and valley. And now if you had your quilt all quilted and did not draw the lines or didn't do um, you know, the quilting up to the lines, you could just draw the lines with your spacing and then just cut right through your quilting. It would not be a problem if you were to bind it immediately. Okay. Trim that away. Now across the top. And this is the ones that are kind of elongated where there is, there is a space. I think that's about an inch is what I had there. Okay, back to the corner. Last side. Now, scallop borders, you need to do bias binding so that it curves around, but it will make it very um, easy to bind, especially these gentle curves, because you don't have to do inside points with a scallop border like this. No inside points, just, um, just hills and valleys. But you will want to cut your, your binding strips on the bias. Just about. Okay. And last one. Okay. And there it is. Just like a breeze, so simple, all the way around. So you saw how I did that, no math, it'll fit any size quilt, any depth of border. You can do either a, a deep scallop or, or a shallow one, and you can add this kind of fun border to just about any quilt without, um, without too much trouble. So you saw how I did that. I, I scrunched them together for the sides to get the, the scallops even out and then I spread them across the ends a little bit further apart. So you can do that with any quilt too. You can, you can spread them out so you get a nice gentle curve or you can scrunch them together to get a little bit tighter. And that's what I did to this quilt here. You can see I added a scallop border to the edge of my vintage windmill pattern. So I went ahead and added a wide white border and then <clears throat> cut it as a scallop and by doing that it kind of adds a nice little flare to this uh to this quilt also now i talked about bias binding so you have to use bias binding because it stretches and it's cut on the cross grain so it's cut on the 45. i'm going to put a link to a bias binding video how to cut your strips to be cut on the bias um i'll put a link to that in the description box because i've already done a video for that but also the way i did this binding where it's a scrappy bias binding it eats up all your scraps. So if you used, you know, something to piece the center and you're just looking to use up the last bits of scraps, you can do this bias binding trick where you sew any width of strip together and then cut it across 
on the 45 and you can make bias binding like I've done here that's scrappy and it just kind of changes color all the way around. So I'm going to put a, a link in the description to a blog I did about that trick as well. And then of course we have the template, the scallop border template by Creative Grids. I will put a link to this in the description box if you would like to get one and use it on your next quilt. I hope you found something inspiring here. Thanks for watching. <laughs> it's a minute. <laughs> I'm getting that too. <laughs> Good. It's like 120 degrees in this room. <laughs> I am Make sweating sure. like a pig. Yeah.